Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. This is the GPD Pocket. It's a fully featured Windows laptop. And today I'm going to show you what you can actually do with this thing. Now, first of all, I'm going to thank Gearbest for sending over the GPD Pocket. You can buy it at the link below and it's actually at a quite decent price. Now, I have never gotten so many compliments and questions about any piece of tech that I have brought out in the public. I took this laptop to school to do some coding and some other stuff and so many people have asked me about it. Wait, what is that? Is that a tablet? Wait, that's a laptop? Oh, it's tiny. It's so cool. And when I went to Starbucks, I tried to work there, but constantly people kept asking me questions about it. So it definitely is a head turner. And it actually really is unique. I can't think of a single other product than this one. It is about the size of a netbook, but it has the premium build quality of like an Apple laptop. And it also is fully featured windows. It can go through most of the tasks that you throw at it and it doesn't throttle. So it feels premium. It's well built and you could kill someone with that thing. That's how well it is built. But also it's super tiny. So the question in the day of phones, where you can do almost everything with the phone is, why does a device like this exist? And before I go into all the use cases for it, I'm gonna run down the spec list. It has a 1080p touchscreen, which at this screen size is super sharp and no complaints there. It also has 8GB of RAM, an Intel Atom X5 C8750, 125GB of flash storage, which isn't super fast. It's about hard drive performance, but of course there's no hard drive in there. And most importantly of all, it has more ports than the freaking MacBook, which is, well, if it's, you can see in this shot, quite a bit different in size. So the fact that this laptop has a headphone jack, a USB 3 port full size, a USB Type-C port, which is also a charging port, and a mini HDMI port, that's just incredible in that form factor. But now, there are plenty of other videos out there that go more into the details of the specs and all the other technical things, but my question with this thing is, what do you use it for? It's so tiny that there's not even a trackpad on there. But on the other hand, it's also like super portable, but couldn't you just use a phone? So I tested 10 different use cases and I'm gonna tell you how I feel about them. Now, they are in no particular order and number one on the list is web browsing. It's quite a basic task. Most people do it on their phones or on their computers every day. You can check your Twitter feed, you can go on YouTube, you can go on Wikipedia, whatever. It's no problem and many websites are optimized for smaller screens anyways, so that's no big deal at all. And the touch screen is very nice for scrolling as you don't have a mouse wheel. So the white browsing works perfectly fine, Wi-Fi is decent, so nothing to worry about. What many of you might be interested in, gaming. Now, of course, this isn't gonna play your AAA games that just came out. It's just like not designed for that. It's a tiny laptop. So what happens if you throw some games at it? So I tried some older titles, Portal 2, which is a brilliant game to this date, and Half-Life 2, and both of them handled great. Now, because the screen is this small, you can easily bump your resolution down quite a bit, which gives you even more performance. And that way I was able to run Portal at around 50 to 60 FPS, no problem. Now, of course, you might want to add a mouse. Using the little dimple thingy is fine for just web browsing and general tasks, but in games it really isn't working out. What this machine might also be great for are things like emulators. You can just pair it up with a controller, throw an emulator on there, and you get a really nice little portable emulator box. Now, if you're planning to use this laptop to take it to class and use it as your main word processing device, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. While the screen is perfectly fine and you can see everything on there, there's also a full-size keyboard with actual click keys, but the keyboard is rather weird to get used to and it is tiny. It's just, it fills out the entire body and I don't see how they could have made it any better or used the space better. 
there are some keys that are a bit weird and have, you have to get used to them, but there literally is just no other place for them to go. So it will take you quite a bit to get used to this keyboard and even if once you get used to it, it's not perfect. I had some keys that didn't register quite as easily as the others. So I had rather a light typer because I use mechanical keyboards where I don't have to press all the way through. So it caused me to miss the A and the E key quite often, but once you get used to it and press a bit harder, this works well. So just writing an email up in a pinch is perfectly fine but for writing a whole essay on it, I might want to get like an external keyboard for that. And speaking of emails, that's perfect for that, but you can also just check your emails on your phone. But if you want something a bit bigger than your phone, this machine is great for emails, because most of the time you don't have to write long texts or anything, and so this is great. Media consumption like YouTube or Netflix also works perfectly. Now, of course, the screen is very limited in size, but well, you want a tiny laptop, so the screen is going to be limited. But with the keyboard, it also includes kind of a hinge, so instead of just being your phone, which you have to balance somewhere, you have an integrated stand. And it's a little bit bigger than the phones, not much though. And the speakers are okay, but they aren't the greatest. They are underneath the keyboard, so the sound is coming out of the keyboard. So for an occasional YouTube video, it's okay, but if you watch more, you maybe want to plug in some headphones. And if you have to create a bunch of PowerPoint presentations for school or work, then this laptop works great for that. You don't need to type a whole lot, so that's perfect, and you don't really need a big screen, so that works well enough. And it also has a mini HDMI out, so you can just get a cheap adapter and use it with almost any projector out there. So for that use case, this is greatly recommended. And it's also great for doing last minute changes while you're waiting in between the breaks at school. Because it's so tiny and you just take it out and no one's spoiled by it. Now, something that's more interesting to me is video and photo editing. And of course, the screen size is going to be hugely limiting. Especially for video editing, I want as much screen real estate as somehow possible. Back home, I have a 40 inch 4K monitor and I still wish I had a second one. So video editing on this is gonna be kinda painful, but if that's all you have with you, then the performance is good enough to do some 1080p video editing. It's not gonna be super smooth, but it works in a pinch and some photo editing is working as well. Just, of course, the screen size isn't ideal for that kind of workload. But what it's better for is if you wanna just preview your shots or your photos somewhere out in the field instead of using the tiny camera screen you can just use an SD card reader and view it on there and that's quite well for that. Another thing that I do quite often is 3D design and there I would have to say it hugely depends on the program. I tried two different ones Fusion 360 on downloaded on the desktop and on shape online. Now in Fusion my experience was that you can use the touch input for moving your model around, which is great as that feels super responsive. But when your thing is right there and you try to click on something, that doesn't work because somehow you need the mouse input for that and it doesn't recognize the touch as a mouse input. Onshape, however, is the exact opposite. It registers your finger input just like mouse input, so you can't directly just drag your finger around and move them all around. But you can use your finger to tap on things. So moving around the model in Onshape is quite a bit more difficult and kind of a pain in the butt. But clicking on stuff is easier. So both aren't great and I would only use them when I'm in a pinch somewhere. But when you add like a mouse to it, then we're talking again. And the screen is big enough for some easier workloads. But what I actually found this thing to be the most useful for what I might use it for in the future is coding. With coding, the thing is, I like to just like, when I have an idea, just code it up real quick, do it in a break, or do it after school or at Starbucks or somewhere. And this thing, I can just throw it in my backpack. And I don't need a huge screen for coding. And also, you don't need to type that much with autocomplete and everything. So the keyboard is fine. And this thing was a real treat. I've gotten more into app development lately and I've done some coding on there 
and I've really enjoyed it. So I was at Starbucks out coding, I was coding in school with some idle time and having this thing with you is very handy for that. And that's also something that you really can't do on a phone. And finally, if you're trying to be the next pro hacker and hacking into everywhere, of course this thing works. You can use a potato for that. But all kidding aside, this thing is very surprising. It holds up in many many tasks that I wouldn't even have necessarily thought. And in the beginning I was very well skeptical. What would you use it for? That's why I wanted to make this video. And after testing it, I can really see why people would like this one. So if you travel a lot and you're just always out and about and you don't want to do everything on your phone, then this thing really is kind of amazing. But if you don't mind carrying around like a 12 inch MacBook, then that may be a better, better option because there's a bigger screen, like a proper keyboard and a trackpad. But if you really are limited in space and just want to throw something in your bag, then this thing is rather amazing. And so this was it for, for today. If you have any other ideas what you could use this for, leave it down in the comments. I'm interested to see what you can come up with. Also, while you're down there, press the like and subscribe button. And you can also check out the description. There are many links down there. There are affiliate links that you can use when you buy stuff online that help me out a lot. And there's also a bunch of social media and everything else down there. So thanks for watching and I'll tell you next time.